All right, welcome everybody. Um, today I want to update you on our new guidelines for indoor in-person gathering at Peace Lutheran Church. Our COVID task force met over the weekend and later our council to wrestle with how we're gonna be safe um, living in this time of the surging coronavirus cases in our region. It's, it's pretty bad out there. And then to balance that with the notion that it's not just about physical health, which is of paramount concern. We've, we've kind of learned a lot of ways how to be physically healthy and what to do, but also to think about how are we healthy in all aspects of life, our spirituality, our mental health, our emotional health, as we live into these times. I mean, it's all connected. And so our original guidelines that we developed in 2020, we had this five phase system uh, that included this gating criteria to allow time for things to calm down and slowly build up. And at a 15% hospitalization uh, rate in our region, we would go down all the way to phase one. And then when, when time came where it fell below that marker, we would build up over a 30 day period. Now what's changed is those guidelines were developed in a time when vaccines were not widely available. And over the course of time, we've learned more about this disease and how to live in society with it. We've learned a few things. And so therefore, we went ahead and updated some of those guidelines to be commensurate with the current reality. And also just to simplify them to say, you know, what are, what are the metrics and what are the ways that we can stay safe, but also stay together and be this, um, this body of Christ together in, in difficult times. And so I wanna, I wanna share my screen and just kind of walk through these guidelines with you. You can see here, um, these are our updated guidelines that we have. There's gonna be some just general uh, guidelines that always apply. The uh, first one in here is we encourage all of the church to just stay informed about what's going on. You know, as time evolves, new variants come out, the landscape shifts, um, things evolve, which means advice from the CDC and agencies and scientists, it's going to also change over time. We're going to learn new things. And so the latest can be found on this link here uh, at the CDC website. We, we try to monitor that and, you know, these guidelines may change over time. Um, that's part of this evolving disease and world that we're living in. Number two here, that if you're feeling ill, and you know, we're going to advise you to stay home. Now, this seems like common sense, right? But I mean, really thinking about if you're ill, you know, you're coughing, you have a cold or something, you know, don't, don't feel obligated. You know, I have to go to worship. I have to be with a whole bunch of people. Now is, now is not the time for that. Now is the time to really think about, am I carrying something that could hurt others? So we're going to, we're just going to advise you, if you feel ill, stay home. Um, also, uh, vaccinations. And right? if you haven't been vaccinated, you know, we're going to formally encourage you to consider vaccination to reduce the risk of infection for yourself. Um, you know, the, the, most of the by and large people in hospitals right now, there are some the vaccinated people, but it is mostly unvaccinated people who are bearing the brunt of this. And so for your, for your own safety and level, um, consider vaccination and also to reduce that risk of, uh, of transmission to others. Um, and not everyone can be vaccinated yet at this time, um, but if you can, um, we'd really uh, encourage you to consider that. Um, of course, online worship. Online worship via live stream is always available. That's not gonna go away. Um, you know, if you're not feeling well that day, you can stay home and online. If you're on vacation, you can stay and watch online. That's always an option. If you're feeling uncomfortable about uh, the, the regional infection rate, online is going to be there. And then we have some just very basic things in worship that we're trying to do. Um, you know, we're having like our communion kits that are disposable, trying to reduce the, the, the ways that we're touching and, and things of that nature. Okay, those were general policies. Now, here's what happens when our hospitalization rate is less than 15%, which is gonna be most of the time. Right now, it's not, but most of the time we're gonna be in this place. And pretty much this is up to personal choice, use good judgment, use your discretion. 
um, things of this notice, masks are advised, but not required. You know, if you want to wear a mask, great, uh, not required if you don't, but um, you know, you, with the Delta variant, we know that transmission can still happen even with vaccinations. And who knows what other variants may come. Uh, event seating will not be managed. So it's going to look more like, you know, church that you're probably more familiar with, with rows and things of that nature. Uh, we won't have any of those requirements. And then social interactions are not going to be managed. You know, share the peace. If you want to shake hands, great. If you don't, if you want to, you know, give hugs and all that, great. But that's, that's going to be up to you. Um, we're just not going to put really any enforcement on that. Um, so we think it's going to be clearer at that point. When we get to a hospitalization rate greater than 15%, this is when our, our tier two kind of level goes into play and we are taking more precautions. So we're going to require masks when we're in this sort of red zone. Um, everyone will have a mask. Uh, everyone, we're going to have some social distancing, chairs spread out. We'll, we'll seat you in family units and clusters. We're just going to play it a little safer at this point because we know infection rate is so high in the area. And then also we're going to do our best to minimize social interactions. You know, we're going to advise people you know, probably shouldn't be shaking hands at this point. Give the peace, peace sign, give a wave in that sense. But again, taking some more precautions when we're in this greater than 15% marker. And then we added a third tier that's really just a matter of what if things get really out of hand? What if we're to the point where, you know, our hospitals are just on the verge of collapse? And we got to the point of hospitalization rate greater than 25%. If we get to that, now I can tell you this, even in the, the, the largest surge back in, um, in, in November, uh, December, January time, where it was, things were really bad, we got to like 23, 24%. If we were to go to get to a 25%, that would trigger the most stringent measure of no in-person gatherings. We haven't been there yet, but we might. And so that gives us at least a measurement to say, no, we're not going to do that. So as of today, as this video is being recorded, we are at the 20% hospitalization capacity. And I'm going to show you um, the, the graph that we're using um, to help see that. So this is the Texas COVID dashboard, and we look at Region P in the area. That's the San Antonio region of which we're a part of. And uh, I mean, you can look at all of them up here on this dashboard and it shows you all of Texas, but that's too much. Um, we're, like I said, we're in Region P right here. And this graph gives you like a six day rolling chart of, of, of hospitalizations, COVID hospitalizations out of total capacity. And so you can see that we've been in this 18% region for a while. Um, we went down a little bit here. I mean, it's pretty high. It's still going up. And at this point, we're just under 20%. We're right at 20% uh, as of August 16th. Um, that's, pretty, that's pretty precarious right now. Um, this is really high. And so in your own personal life, use that discretion. Think about that when you're out in public. Um, I, the last thing I want is for people to get sick and certainly to spread that. Part of our social responsibility, you know, isn't just ourselves, but you know, keeping people safe in that sense. So realize we're in a we're in a tough spot right now. With that said, I'll just remind you that we are in um, we're in phase two then uh, of our system of our current guidelines, which means we're going to take some of those precautions. We will have in-person indoor gatherings, which means we will have worship this Sunday. Uh, every Wednesday, I'm going to look at that number and I'll make an announcement to the congregation so that if we get to that 25%, then you'll know. And we'll, of course, we'll go to online. Or if we fall below that 15%, you'll know that we're, um, we're going to ease up on some restrictions. And that'll help make you make those decisions for you and your family. But regardless, it's a tough time. It's a challenging time that we're facing. We do it together as faithful people. Um, and it's exactly in these times in which God calls us to walk together in the struggles of life. And indeed, we know that that's where God walks with us in the struggles of life. It's where we need God. And so I, I would just ask that it, let me know how I can support you or how we can walk together in faith in these times and be that light 
of Christ shining in a world that feels like it's dark. Um, we get to be the hope. We get to point to, to this healing, merciful God, and we get to be a part of that. And so remember that we are a Christ-centered community of believers called to love God, love people, and serve the world. Peace be with you.